In this video, I want to look at convolutional neural networks, or CNNs. And in the present example, I'm showing a random noise input image to this CNN to deliver an output where this CNN is being trained by an optimizer in order to map from this input to an output where the output needs to match the target on the right-hand side here. And this is basically using a mean square error loss um, in order to optimize the parameters of the CNN such that that random noise gets matched um, to the desired target. Um, so the CNN has about 30,000 parameters in this example, and so that's why it's well able to map this uh, dense noise here um, to an output which is looking closer and closer to the desired target. Now in this video, I just want to understand, uh, go through with you some uh, basic understandings of CNNs in terms of their uh, linearity, nonlinearity, and shift invariance or shift variance. And to do that, then I'm going to first of all um, show um, on the bottom left hand side here, I'm going to be showing uh, the training loss. So this is the mean square error training loss uh, for this particular network. I'll go into details in a moment about uh, what these networks are in terms of their architecture. Um, but there'll be um, this key number here, which is showing the number of parameters that are being trained in the CNN. Anyway, um, to get underway, we're going to start off with a simpler uh, network, um, and I'll talk you through that in a second. And also, I'm going to start with a very simple uh, input, which would be a point source. Right, so with this in mind, let me just reinitialize uh, that network. Now this is a uh, mapping, um, this linear shift uh, equivariant or linear shift invariant mapping is taking a single point source input and mapping it to an output. And we can see that this CNN, the details are given here, and I'll go through that in a second, is only able uh, to deliver um, this patch component of the target. And that's because the receptive field uh, for a given point input is, is limited. And we can see that receptive field is related to the number of layers and the fact we're only using three by three size kernels. So this um, simple CNN has no nonlinearity. There's no activation, no bias at all. It's just 16 layers. And in each layer, there are 16 kernels of size three by three and 16 channels for the majority of those layers. The first layer, of course, only needs to have single channels uh, for the 16 kernels. OK, so we can see this single point then maps um, to just uh, that certain receptive field in the target. Um, OK, let's see what happens now. If I change uh, the input to be uh, five point sources, let me just reinitialize the training process here. Now I'm putting five point inputs into this CNN. And um, again, this is just a, a simple linear shift invariant. That's what we'd say in signal processing, but really it's linear shift equivariant. Um, this simple mapping then is showing that each of those five point sources is being mapped to an identical response because of the shift equivariance in the output. And so for that uh, reason, what we're going to end up with in this uh, mapping here um, is basically uh, five kind of patches here that correspond to the average of those five corresponding patches in the target. And that's because it's limited to this shift equivariance um, in its point response functions. Um, so this is going to be a useful kind of uh, test uh, example. And so for that reason, I'll be putting those five point source uh, inputs that their outputs from the network. I'll show in the bottom right hand corner there and say that's five point spread functions. Um, so here, uh, what we're doing is looking at um, the last 200 uh, epochs, um, in other words, training updates of the parameters in that CNN. Um, because th these parameters are being optimized uh, by the Adam optimizer to minimize the mean square error um, between uh, the output and the target. Okay, so this network then was linear shift invariant. Let's see what happens if we introduce uh, some non-linearity. And we can do that by switching on bias and also including uh, an activation function as well between all of the layers. So I'll be using the prelude um, activation. So let's uh, switch that on now. This is network seven in my list here. And um, so what we can see now is that these five point sources are going through this uh, CNN to deliver um, these five 
point response functions here. And what we're going to see is that, again, we're ending up with um, these five regions that correspond to the average of the five locations in the target. And that's because this is still a, a shift equivariant mapping or shift invariant in sort of signal processing terminology. Um, but now uh, I've labeled it as NLSI because it's nonlinear, thanks to the bias and activation, but retaining um, shift equivariance or shift invariance. And so we can see um, there's only so much that it can do when we've only got these sparse uh, five point source inputs due to um, that shift equivariance. OK, so what we'll do now is um, introduce um, a way of uh, allowing a CNN to be easily a shift variant mapping. And to do that, I'll first of all step back to a linear network, um, but then I'll introduce um, some coordinate information. So what we've got now is um, two um, channels um, in addition to these, this input channel here, two channels which contain um, the X coordinates of these points and as well as the Y coordinates. So we've basically got an input image, then we've got a, a channel, which I'm not showing here, containing the X coordinates and then a channel containing the Y coordinates. So that's three channels um, at the input of this CNN. So it's the same architecture as before. We've just stepped back to linearity though. So no bias, no activation. Um, basically still 16 layers, 16 kernels, three by three in size. Um, but by using these extra coordinate channels, we've now gone to a shift variant mapping. And that's exactly what we can see occurring in the output here. Each of these five points um, is delivering a different looking point response function in the output. OK, and so we can see it's actually able to match those corresponding regions um, in the target. Um, so the training is uh, going quite slowly here. Um, it'll take a while. This is a purely linear mapping, uh, but shift variant now. So to try and speed things up a bit, um, what we can do is a switch back on the non-linearities. And so that's going to give us a non-linear shift variant mapping. So let's change to that network there. So non-linear shift variant. And what we can see now is these five point sources going through this non-linear shift variant CNN. And indeed, we're seeing um, that we're getting different responses. Now, in fact, I should say that really the CNN is actually... Um, shift equivariance still, it's still composed of convolutions, but I'm calling it a non-linear shift variant mapping because the um, input image has uh, additional channels which tag each of these um, points with a unique coordinate. So really it's still a, a non-linear shift equivariant mapping, but we've achieved the shift variance by introducing those two extra coordinate channels. And so we can see now with the non-linearities that certainly helped us uh, to converge more rapidly um, to match those corresponding regions in the desired um, target. Okay, so there's obviously still only so much these methods can do because uh, the receptive field is, is a bit limited with 16 layers and three by three kernels. Um, what I can do now is um, introduce um, some different inputs. Let's maybe go to the, uh, the dense noise. I can make that a bit sparser. Let's just reduce the the density of that input noise. So now I've got this collection of randomly positioned point sources. Um, they do still have the coordinate information included in the input. Um, let me reinitialize this network. There we go. Um, so these now can be mapped through this um, convolutional neural network to deliver an output um, which should hopefully quite efficiently uh, match the target. And in fact, what we can do as well is display um, an error image here, and that shows um, the dis discrepancy between the output and the desired target. So we're looking at the error here. Um, now, what we can see here is um, certainly this is a shift variant mapping. We've got five very different looking uh, point uh, response functions here, or point spread functions. And so definitely confirming the SV aspect, the shift variance uh, component to this. Okay, um, just to show a bit more of the flexibility of these kinds of methods, I could change uh, the input. Obviously, I could leave this to run to get lower and lower loss. And um, you can see that this will end up uh, being um, matching the target very well. This is only one training pair, one input, one target. So, of course, with this, this many parameters, it's very easy um, 
to to be able to match uh, the target. We, we're not concerned here in this video with generalization. Uh, but anyway, let's explore different inputs here. Um, so in fact, this is just going to achieve the identity mapping. Let's see if it can do that. Um, so this is where the input matches the target. Um, so we're getting different uh, point spread functions here. But if I leave this to optimize, I'm expecting these to become uh, delta functions, of course, uh, where the input uh, matches the target. So I could leave that to run. In fact, you can already see these uh, point spread functions are looking slowly but surely uh, more similar to each other, but they should, as I say, um, end up being um, effectively delta functions if the input matches the target. Okay, um, let's um, move on to some different inputs for some more interest as to what's happening here. So we can look at uh, other examples. Um, let's uh, change input again. Um, this kind of network would, um, for example, also be able to uh, convert a different looking image input uh, to a desired target. Um, so here we're taking this kind of pet-like um, FDG brain slice and converting it to this uh, MR target. Um, again, no surprise really with this many uh, parameters that can be trained in the CNN, it's quite easy uh, to learn how to map uh, a very different image to another uh, image that looks entirely different. And so we can see it's uh, got, got that uh, mapping figured out quite straightforwardly. Again, nothing to say uh, for generalization here. This is more just looking at the capabilities, the expressivity of these networks. Um, so maybe let's uh, finish uh, by looking at uh, some encoder decoder architectures. Um, first of all, I'll start with a linear, um, a linear encoder decoder. There we go. This is the linear um, encoder decoder example, um, where what I'm showing here is that uh, for about the same number of parameters, if we go through three encoder layers and then followed by three decoder layers. So basically encoding, I'm downsampling by a factor of two spatially and then increasing the number of features features uh, by, by two each time as well. And in the decoder, I'm upsampling uh, using transpose convolution and uh, halving the number of features at each upsampling stage. Um, here we can see that this is just a linear um, shift variant mapping in principle, although here it's very interesting to see that it's behaving in uh, a relatively shift equivariant or shift invariant uh, manner. Um, and uh, perhaps that's not too surprising. It depends on how that downsampling and upsampling um, is done. Um, but uh, certainly for the case of the linear um, mapping, um, it's struggling a bit to match the target. So uh, let's introduce uh, some non-linearities into that. So I'm just now including the bias and the activation. Um, so the same architecture otherwise. And we can see that um, this also is struggling a bit. Maybe it's going to take a while to reduce that loss function. I probably need to, let me try reducing the learning rate here, um, see if that can help a bit. It looks like it's going to take a while to optimize this. Um, let me just reinitialize. There we go. I've reinitialized now using uh, a lower, and let me use a lower learning rate and uh, see if that can help uh, get a mapping from the input to the target. Okay, this network is um, struggling a bit. Um, I, I'm not gonna wait for that loss to, to drop all the way. So maybe then what I can do is just finish uh, by using uh, a very large encoder uh, decoder architecture. Uh, this will do the job. This has got um, half a million parameters in it and look how rapidly uh, that very deep network uh, managed to go from five point sources to the desired um, output matching the target. The error image here is probably the best we've seen so far. See how fast that was uh, by virtue of, of a very deep architecture. So what we can do actually is maybe just explore this a bit. Um, there's a single point source input to this very deep architecture. Um, seems to be uh, a bit limited in what it can do here. But but notice um, our five point spread functions, uh, basically the network has memorized uh, the target here. And so each of those five point sources has got a definitely a very different response. Um, certainly suggesting the encoder decoder architecture is definitely in the shift variant category. Uh, let's just see what else it can do in terms of alternative inputs. There's the noise input. Um, so it's got no problems at all mapping that one very quickly. 
Uh, identity mapping, how does it get on with that case there? Looks like uh, it's got great ease with that many parameters and such a deep network. Uh, it, can, um, it can get to the target quite efficiently there as well. Um, no problem with that. And uh, going from a simple Shep Logan Phantom, again, it's always very easy for this network to memorize its target, maybe no surprise. Um, what I can maybe finish with is going to the random noise, making that a bit sparser, give it a bit more of a challenge again. And uh, we can see that this network's clearly got no problems at all, uh, given its uh, high number of parameters. Anyway, I hope this uh, video was useful for giving some insight into the various architectures. So we went through um, this one here, the linear uh, shift invariant mapping, and uh, we saw that it's got um, identical uh, point spread functions according to position, and it's got its shift equivariant. Um, then we also considered uh, introducing nonlinearities, and that could help, uh, it seems, at least in these quick experiments, um, can help with convergence, but it's still a uh, shift um, equivariant in its uh, mapping. Um, and so then what I did was introduce uh, coordinate channels um, to now give us a nonlinear shift variant uh, mapping, and that's what can take this collection of point sources and deliver an output that matches the target. And we see here with the five point spread functions that they all look very different indeed. So I'll just let this one uh, run a little bit uh, to finish the video. And meanwhile, thank you very much for listening and for watching.